I think we're up to chapter nine. Yes, chapter nine. Silently, Echo eased open the door to the captain's quarters and crept inside. A board creaked under her boots and Gilbert's claws tightened on her shoulder. She froze for a moment, hardly daring to breathe. Had anyone heard her? But after a few anxious moments, no one came. Echo tiptoed around to the other side of Lil's great oak desk. Gilbert leapt down onto the wooden gleaming surface and gave her a look that said, are you sure we should be sneaking in around here? It did feel strange to be on this side of the desk. Echo had only ever sat opposite Lil before and her office was strictly out of bounds to the rest of the crew. A shiver of guilt ran through her. Gilbert was right, she shouldn't be in here. But what choice did she have? Lil wasn't here to ask, and if, what if she needed Echo? And what if she'd got shark's fin peak? She got two shark's fin peak and she was already in trouble. No, sometimes a true sky pirate had to take matters into their own hands. Now, where was it? Echo pulled open each of the drawers in turn, but there was no sign of a stinger. Where could she have hidden it, Gilbert? Echo gazed around the room in exasperation. It was so gloomy in here and round portholes only let in a watery streak of moonlight and she didn't have anything with which to light an oil lamp. Gilbert disappeared into the top drawer and Echo heard a dull clunk as he butted something with his snout. Snout is your nose. An eerie green glow spilled out and Echo blinked in surprise. Then she realized what Gilbert had just found, a glow jar. She said, taking the little glass container and swinging it from her finger. Well done, Gilbert, this will come in handy. Gilbert popped his head out of the drawer with a chirp that said, you're welcome, and scuttled back onto Echo's shoulder. Now let's find this sword. Echo held up the jar to illuminate the room and straight away saw the sheathed sword lying on top of a hat box on the map cabinet. She gazed up at it. Can you get it? She said. Gilbert bobbed his head, did a flying leap from Echo's shoulder and shimmied up the side of the cabinet in a flash of gold. At the top, he disappeared behind the scabbard. There was a scraping sound and suddenly the sheath Rapier was tipping and falling down towards Echo's open arms. Echo took the little sword in her right hand, feeling a tiny jolt of recognition as the hilt slipped into her palm perfectly. She slid Stinger into her belt, but even the, sli the slight weight of the blade made it slip out. Instead, she stashed it down the side of her boot before scooping up Gilbert and racing to join Horace. What took you so long? Horace grumbled as she ran outside. He rubbed his folded arms. I was getting nervous out here. I got my sword. You're, Horace's mouth gaped, but you're not ready, Flora said. Yes, I am. We caught those crabs, didn't we? But why would we need a sword, Echo? We're only going to take a look. It's an excellent question from Horace there. She's been telling him that they're just gonna look, just gonna look, we just gotta check, we just gotta make sure everything's safe, we're just gonna look. But then she goes back for the sword and that suggests that actually it's pretty gonna be pretty dangerous, I think. I also think she'd be better off getting the rest of the Sky Pirates. Anyway, that's just what I think. It's just a precaution, she said. I don't believe her. Said Echo, hoping she he didn't notice she was lying. There you go, she knew she was lying. Here, I got something for you to catch. She threw him the jar of glow bugs and scrambled into the seat, cranking Cloudcatcher's engine into life. Ready? Are you sure you know how to fly this thing without bulkhead? Of course, Echo set her jaw. How hard could it be? She had managed while Bulkhead was catching the clouds, and although it seemed like a lifetime ago, she had flown Professor Dangerwig's airship in the search for her of her mother twice, and only crashed it one of those times. Well, that doesn't sound very good. Two times she flew it, and one time she crashed it. 
As Echo pulled back on the joysticks, Horace let out a squeal and covered both eyes with his hands. Gilbert hid his face in the collar of Echo's shirt. Cloudcatcher whirred into the air. And that is the end of that section. We're going to find out more about what they do tomorrow. Next time. Okay. Good night, beautiful Baba. Do you want me to blow you a kiss? <sighs> Here you go. In fact, you can have two. Other hand. Okay, and one for me, please. <clears throat> I want another one too. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, good night, my beautiful Baba. Sleep well, sweet dreams.